I do with Darren Jamali? What do you think about David Kinzer? Stop the ball now! Oh, wow. Okay.
uh, for this country and that he would move the country in a direction away from war, especially war in Muslim nations. I thought that the American uh, people uh, would know, learn the lesson of Iraq with the so-called Bush doctrine of spreading democracy in the Arab and Muslim world and see the mess that they have made in Iraq. Nearly two million Iraqi civilians dead, nearly 6,000 young Americans dead, 32,000 wounded, and then he engages in another war. And the only reason that he didn't put troops on the ground, he's facing this 2012 election, and he was sure that the American people would not go for it. Brother Farrakhan made a tape at the UN. He had a press conference. Though it was not covered by the media, the press conference was turned into a booklet that we just shipped in this morning. It is worth studying. And I'm hoping that some of the uh, brothers and sisters, misguided brothers and sisters, would get it and read it because he goes over a history of Libya in this book. We must keep this going. I want to thank Answer Coalition. We, we, we have to uh, keep it going across the country until we rock this country so when 2012 comes, he will make a decision that he has made a mistake and pull the people out. So what America is attempting to do, it's a move for oil. It's a move to feed the military-industrial complex. We will talk about this more when we get to George Washington. Thank you for showing up today. Today's demonstration was the largest demonstration yet to say that the American people have wakened up, are standing up, and are telling the government that speaks in their name, spends their tax dollars to the tune of $10 million a day, to bomb poor people in Tripoli and the rest of Libya, that they can do it in our name, but not with our consent. The Obama administration's walking a, a fine line here. It says it's a, a moral imperative to protect civilians, and thus the United States must bomb Libya. And yet, the same government says we won't commit ground troops. We absolutely won't commit ground troops. Well, if this is such an imperative cause, why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they uh, order ground troops to Libya? Why wouldn't they do it? The reason is the people of the United States, of course, would not support that. So they've adopted a different strategy. If they send troops to Libya, American soldiers and Marines will die. And every casualty will become a political liability for the Obama administration. But if you can use cruise missiles and bunker buster bombs and 2,000 pound bombs and drones and just carry out endless military strikes against Libya, you can guarantee that all the bleeding is done by Libyans. Right. And the calculation of the U.S. government is, if only Libyans bleed, then the people of the United States won't go into the streets. We are not the broad masses yet. We are the dedicated activists who are committing ourselves today not just to come to a demonstration, as good as it was, and it was a great demonstration. Not simply to come to a meeting, but to take these leaflets and these posters and use our voices and use every ability that we have 
to spread the word that the war in Libya is a crime against humanity, it's a war crime, it doesn't speak for us, and that it must be opposed. And after today, if you take that spirit, we will know our demonstration is a success, not because we had a great turnout, but because we developed a small army of organizers, activists, agitators. And I'm going to ask Brother Akbar Mohammed to, to speak next. <laughs> Uh, first and foremost, as a Muslim, we always begin in the name of God. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This war in Libya is not about a humanitarian crisis. And some poor people in Benghazi were going to be slaughtered by Muammar Gaddafi, who were just holding up roses and picketing for change. And uh, if you get the former foreign minister, Musa Kosa, who I know fairly well, if you get the first official statement that he wrote, he wrote about how the people there went and raided a police uh, headquarters and took weapons. And I was in Libya one time listening to Brother Gaddafi, and he said that we've made our mistakes, but our intentions were uh, sincere. But there's always people who make mistakes, but many of them don't fess up that it's a mistake, like Barack Obama right now seeing the mess that he's in, and not only in the America, but in the world. You bring balance. You make them look at what they're doing. And without you, they would run reckless and they would go crazy with the military industrial complex, the prison system in America, where a few people are making billions of dollars on the brothers who are, and sisters who are locked up in these prisons across America, many of them innocent. We've left enough of those in the struggle on the wayside. So we have to look at this struggle. And Brian, you have it absolutely right. It starts small. But I want those who are young, uh, you may not remember this, but we changed history in the protest over Vietnam. That's right. The American government lost that war and had to run out there because the country itself was divided. LBJ didn't step down for health reasons. LBJ realized that he couldn't handle this. And he realized that this was too much on him and it was a divided country. And in that divide of the country over the war, 58,000, just think about it, 58,000 Americans lost their life in the Vietnam conflict. And Ho Chi Minh, though he died before the war was over, but the very city that was the headquarters of the American army is now Ho Chi Minh City. And all of those uh, men and women that we wasted in that war trying to feed an industrial military complex so that they could make billions of dollars on the life of poor brothers and sisters from the ghettos of America, those from the farms in the rural areas of America. So this has to be a sustained effort. What politicians and the White House respect is if you can turn people out in the street. They may make out, the press may avoid you, and they may make out they're not listening, but trust me, they're listening. If you can work in a coalition, there's always gonna be internal contradictions. We wanna make sure that Barack cannot sit back and say, I'm gonna get 97% of the African-American a vote. I went to Puerto Rico and those Puerto Ricans who are citizens, I'm going to get 40% of their vote in America. We got to make sure that that doesn't happen and we got to make sure that we say that you were, may have went in that office for the people but evidently there's forces around you that control you and you are making missteps that will be your undoing. Thank you. May God bless you. Assalamu alaikum. Once again, thank you, Brother Akbar Muhammad. Give him a round of applause. All right, I have two quick announcements. If you have not had any water yet, can you raise your hand? Anybody hasn't had any water? Okay, could somebody please hand that gentleman? Thank you very much. Oh, lady over there, some water. Anybody else, water? We don't want anybody falling out now. Okay. Okay, next thing, 
Uh, Liz and Nadia have clipboards for sign-in sheets. If, we, if you want us to keep in touch with you, you want us to let you know about the different demonstrations that we're having, the different events that we're organizing. Um, and if you ever want to volunteer and help coordinate some activities, definitely give your information to her. Um, so now we are going to hear from our Libyan brothers and sisters. Maybe one or two of you have something that you would like to share um, since you travel some, from so far. Thank you. Here in Washington DC to, sh to show your support for the Libyan people. Um, uh, as a Libyan citizen who has been sent by government to pursue his graduate studies here in the United States, um, would like to thank you very much and would like to uh, send the gratitude of the Libyan people for you because you understand the reality and the truth about what's going on in Libya. The truth is that the Western nations, United States of America, Britain, French, and other nations start a wage this war against Libya not because of humanitarian uh, uh, basis or because they want to protect the humans, human beings there. The real cause of their interfer intervention in the Libyan uh, civil war is that because they are interested in the oil there. Yeah. Yeah. They are interested in stopping brother Gaddafi from continuing supporting Afri African, Na African Union. <laughs> brother Gaddafi in, in 1999, in September 9th, 1999 in, in, the, in the city of Sirt, gathered all the uh, African leaders and asked them to act together. All the nations are working together and uh, forming unions, forming um, economic powers, political powers. And the Africans should do the same thing. Yes, yes. They, should just, they, they should come together and form one African state yes. that should protect its people. Protect its, its wealth. Yes. African continent have been subjected to imperialism. One time, they, they colonized each of the African countries. They get all the wealth from Africa. And now they are blaming us, blaming African people of being poor and cor have corrupted governments. Who did that for us? Should, shouldn't you ask for, for, for those Western nations, uh, governments? Shouldn't they ask themselves? Who did that for the African countries? As soon as they realized that the, uh, the, the uh, leader, Colonel Gaddafi, was working hard to bring all the African nation, African um, countries together, they, they get mad at him. Yeah. They were not so happy. So they just were trying to find an excuse. Yes. So some group of people come out in the city of Benghazi to ask of these legitimate rights. And the government, well, the government and especially the brother leader, Muammar Gaddafi, who is not the president. And I was just want everybody here to understand that brother Gaddafi is not the president. And when President Obama asking him to step down, step down of what? <laughs> step, yeah, it's true. In March 2nd, 1977, Brother Leader Gaddafi said that the people, Libyan people should rule themselves through basic people congresses right. and people committees. He submitted the power to the people since 1977 
So, I, I come up about the, the, the uh, sorry, about the political system in Libya. Maybe many of us here uh, really doesn't know exactly how the political system works in Libya. So, in, in, in February 17th, instead of going to streets and just asking for the rights, they went out to police stations, security compounds, to military compounds, and just start to killing policemen, security forces, killing uh, army, uh, the Libyan army, and stealing the, the guns, and start killing other civilians, and claiming that the, the Libyan government did that, which is not true at all. And this was actually motivated by some Western intelligence agencies because they find this an opportunity for them they've been trying to find this this a chance they, they, as i told you they, they don't like what brother Gaddafi is doing for africa so they support them with, with guns even before february 17th and then in just a few weeks, they came up with the resolutions 1970-1973 to intervene. The, uh, uh, I mean, don't you just think this is, has been planned for a long time? As the brother uh, uh, Akbar Muhammad saying, those flags of the King Dries, millions of them were printed. In the first day where all, all, all over uh, Benghazi and, and other western uh, cities in Libya and eastern cities in Libya this has been bland so I just want to remind you that every war NATO wa waging was based on lies hands off Libya hands off Libya hands off Libya this will be civil rights attorney Mara Verhaden Hilliard being out here today, going in front of the White House, and sending the message that is being sent is the most important thing that can happen. And here in the United States, sending that message, it's, it's, it's sending a voice that this administration and its fawning press does not want anyone to hear. I mean, what are we hearing about for the last several months? The humanitarian bombing. It's an amazing idea, right? Humanitarian bombing. Because these bombs, I understand, are a little different than bombs as we understand them. When they fall and explode, there's something different about them. It's humanitarian. Now, we can try and listen to that over and over again and scratch our heads and think, okay, that just makes no sense. Or we can act on our anger at the outrageousness of that. Everyone here saw that picture of that four-year-old child. That four-year-old who was killed by one of those humanitarian bombs dropped by NATO. And when they bombed the four-year-old child's birthday party, the NATO spokesperson said it was a legitimate military target. A humanitarian bomb, a child's birthday party, a legitimate military target. Like these are the, this is the world of the United States. This is the world of its press. This is what we're hearing over and over again. Or another really uh, great concept. Now, who has the right to determine the future and the destiny of Africa and the African people? The African people? No, 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 no. The people that that know the best for the future and the destiny of the African people are the imperialist leaders in the United States, in France, in Britain. They definitely know better. They definitely have the right. I mean, I think we have a good long history of seeing just how that works out. The theft of humans, the theft of resources, the legacy of that vicious destruction. And the French are like, oh, I really want to get back there as fast as I can. And who benefits from these humanitarian bombs? The corporations that have a really strong interest in controlling that part of the world. 
and the corporations here that make those bombs and sell them. Well, we get a jobs report yesterday that says that unemployment, which we know is all completely undercounted, is over 9%. While the Obama administration is telling people and telling older folks in the United States that they're going to have to pay more just to see a doctor. There's no money for teachers. There's no money for education. But there's endless money for humanitarian bombs killing four-year-olds for a war in Iraq and a war in Afghanistan, for bombing Pakistan, for bombing Yemen, for threatening Iran. It never ends. And no one ever turns around and says, well, maybe we should take that money. No one in the government turns around and says, maybe we should take that money and do something better with it. But the people of the United States are saying that. And as Brian was talking about, and as Brother Muhammad was talking about, it's a very tenuous position for this administration right now. A very tenuous position to keep bombing Libya. They're not winning. They really thought that they would win. They thought you come in with this mass military might and you bomb people and the French are arming the rebels and that they would just win. But there you have more than a million people in the streets saying stop bombing our country. You have people that aren't just walking away and handing themselves over to the French and the British and the American imperialists because people have the right and the desire and the fight for self-determination. And that has always been true and that will never stop. And so when we're here in the United States and we're going to the White House and we're saying we are the people of Libya, we are the people of the Ivory Coast, we are the people of the United States, we are the people that are united in opposition to the forces and we can defeat them because we have historically. In that same sort of twisted world of humanitarian bombs, suddenly there's that perfectly timed uh, arrest warrant. The arrest warrant for uh, you know, war crimes, crimes against humanity. Now here in the United States, I know that we can't find anyone that deserves to be arrested for war crimes or crimes against humanity. <laughs> and you don't see them rushing out with an indictment and threatening to arrest uh, I mean, there's a long list, right, of, of people that we could point to uh, who've lived in that house down the street. And they're not doing that. So it's up to us to be a force that stands together and stands in opposition. Because historically, it is that force that will win, that has won. And it's that force again that we're seeing come together. And, you know, there's going to be all these little videos from the right wing and from that fool Glenn Beck and all those kind of racists. And they're going to try and find whatever snippet they can find that somebody said. And then they're going to try, as Brian said, to divide one group from another. And there's a reason that they try and do that. Because if people are united and they're looking around and people who are really hurting here in the United States think, well, you know what? Those folks are not my enemy. And why is it that I don't have a job? And I can't go a doctor, and I can't feed my kids, but yet all these bombs are falling. And why is it that we have a prison system, a prison industrial complex, as Brother Muhammad was talking about, that locks up the vast population of black and Latino youth in the United States? I mean, why is that? Who benefits from that? Who benefits from this war? Who benefits from that system? It is not us, it is not the people. So we stand together, and we will continue to fight together. Yes. And thank everyone for being here today. Thank you again, Mara. Verhagen Hilliard.